The problem is we look at hope and say, I wish. Expectation says, I have because he said, I have. What, what, what you expect? If I get sick, healing is a children's bed. I expect to be healed. The Lord is my provider. We say that all the time. Oh, he's Jehovah Jireh, he's Jehovah Nisi. We going up through all of them. But what do you expect? If you don't expect anything, you won't receive anything. The book of Ephesians, Paul wrote these words in the fourth chapter. The, we're going to do the first six verses, or speak on the first six verses. It says this, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called, with all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body, one spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Father, we pray right now that you take full control of our hearts, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, for thou art my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. We got a, a, a word for tonight, and it's called Worthy, from the first verse, are we worthy? Walking worthy with God. Walking worthy with God. How many of us know we are walking with God? How many of us believe we are walking with God? And I pray all of us are walking with God. But if you, if you notice in, the, in, this, in this passage how, how Paul opened up, he said, I therefore the prisoner of the Lord. Now you got to realize that Paul is in prison in Rome already. And you got to think about it. It's not the, the, the prison that we have here, you know, air conditioned and uh, they're watching TV and they got a basketball court on the thing to go and play and, and all this kind of, this, this, this was hardcore. This, in a prison, in a dungeon with chains hooked on your foot while you're in a locked place and you eat up when they tell you, 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 you it's, it, it, they didn't have all the, the uh, conveniences that we have or that we, some of us know because we've been locked up, but I, you know, I ain't been locked up so I'm, <laughs> I'm just talking. <laughs> from what I've seen on TV. But the prison, <laughs> but, but the prison system is, is, is so easy going now. You hear people say, well, if it get cold, I've, I've heard them say, oh, it's getting cold out there. I'm gonna get three, three, uh, three hots in the car. And they go do something in the store to go get locked up because it's so easy. But Paul here is a prisoner in there. And look, how he, look what he says. He said, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord. Paul took an opportunity from where he was physically at and turned it, made a spiritual adjustment. How many of us take our, our physical position, our bad place, and make a spiritual adjustment like Paul did? Walking worthy with God. Paul was, was, was different because he, 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 like some of us, we walk to the beat of a different drama. Everybody else marching in step. Paul was marching in, in, in a different beat. Why can't we be like Paul, take our, uh, that situation and say, I'm gonna make a spiritual adjustment in it? Do we do, we do that or do we, uh, do we complain? Lord, I, I was, because that's what Paul could have done. He could, Lord, I'm preaching your word and they don't want to hear it and they're locking me up. Why don't you come down and do something? Why don't you shake the prison and, and let me out of here? Paul said, I'm a prisoner of the Lord. He took an opportunity to say, I'm just going to make a spiritual adjustment and not complain. Now, I know some of us, but we, 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 we intelligent, we wise. We don't call it complaining. We say, I'm making a conscientious uh, statement about the position that I'm in. 
You're complaining. But, you know, we're wise enough to change. If, you know, you know like, oh, no, I don't complain, you know, but, but, you know, the situation warrant this, that I should see this. You're complaining. Paul didn't complain. He, 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 took his, he took his situation and said, now, I'm writing this letter to the, Ephes- to the Ephesians. And you got to know, these people was, uh, was not in unity. They wasn't in sync. So he said, well, I, I'm, I'm going to show them what this is like. And, and that's a difference from somebody just telling you and then somebody showing you. Because you see, we can tell people how to do, do this, do that, do this, and, and, and a mechanic will call you. No, not a mechanic, them, those, those uh, computer people. You, you say, hey, look this thing. Oh, yeah, you go to this thing, and they say all them words, and where the button to turn the thing on, man? That's all I need to know. <laughs> but they give you all this, this geek talk, and, and then you, t- and you say, oh, okay, I'm, I'm coming to the store, because I don't know what, you, what you're talking about. But Paul said, you know what? I'm going to be an example. Y'all know I'm in prison. The, the letter I'm, I'm writing y'all is from prison, but I'm going to let y'all know, I don't look at that. I look at I'm a prisoner of God. God is in control of my life. He took, out the, the, he took this physical thing and made a spiritual reason. Now, the problem is the same problem we have in churches today. There's a problem among believers with unity. We don't like to come together. We, 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 have, a, we have a problem with unity. If... Uh, Golly, if you married, y'all know I like to pick on married people. I'm married myself. But if you're married, you know, things can be going good. And look like something just break that unity. And sometimes it's just a small thing. You left that plate on the table again? And, and, and us as men, we say, it's just a plate. If you pick up the plate and just turn like that, it's in the sink. What you making a big fuss about? And they'd be saying the same thing. If it's that close, why didn't you pick it up and put it in the sink? But we have a problem with unity. Let's look at what that, that word he says, word. What does word mean? What does word mean? Word means to, to reach or attain a desire, an end. Mean that it's adequate, it's enough, it's sufficient. Worthy. How many of us feel worthy? Every now and then, even in our life, we feel like uh, I'm not worthy. When we compare ourselves to, to, to Christ and to God, yeah, we, we know we're not, we, we know we're not worthy of what he's done. And what, but just among ourselves, individual, every now and then we get in that, that place, we call it depression, but uh, where we just don't feel worthy. And, and we don't feel adequate. I'm not enough, especially in relationships. Y'all know I like to pick on relationships. Yeah. You're walking with your wife, see my wife, and you gotta make sure you're looking straight ahead. You know, you, you mar, you're walking, you're, uh, your fiance, you're walking with him. Call you, you somebody better not pass and <laughs> And the question going to be up, Kip, what, I'm not enough? Why, why are you looking on? But when you, when you see somebody that's worthy, you don't have to drop something, turn around. You don't have to do those things. Because you know what? They're worthy. They're adequate. They're enough. There's another definition they, they give for, for, uh, for, for worthy. It says... Uh, Balance, balance, balancing the scales. I didn't give them all that. This, this one, he said, you're balancing the scales. What does that look like? Balancing the scale. Now, we, we take it in the, in the opposite thing when we say balancing the scale. If somebody do us, do us something, or I'm going to get even with them, I'm going to do something to them. But that's not what they're talking about. He's saying balancing the scale, he's talking about our attitude and our faith walk. When, 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 and, and we're in that season, when, when Christ came into Jerusalem, riding on the donkey, what they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highs, great. Or they was, they was cheering him on. And you don't hear Jesus talking about, yeah, I'm the man, yeah, I'm here, I'm riding. I'm, you don't hear that. He just came on in, went in the synagogue, started preaching, started teaching, did what he had to do. Balancing the scales. The same people that was hollering Hosanna, Hosanna, and high. 
a few days later, guess what they were saying? Crucify him, crucify him. And he, I'm balanced, I'm gonna stay just like I am. He didn't say, why y'all wanna do, why y'all turning on me? Why y'all trying to kill me? Why y'all doing this to me? Why y'all turning y'all back, y'all no good? No, he just stayed steady. Balancing the scale. How, how hard is it for us to balance the scale? To stay steady. When, when, when unexpected trouble come, do you tilt to this side or do you stay steady? Walking worthy. That's what, what, what Paul said. You got to be walking worthy of the vocation, the job. Now, and, and he says what? For which you will call. I beseech you, brethren, to walk, that you walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Now, that call is not for preachers. It's not for teachers. It's not, it's not administrative call. It, it's a call for salvation. Let me, let me give you the, the, the definition. I think they had it, Kalo. It says, the divine invitation to participate in the blessing of redemption. Y'all heard that definition? A divine invitation. God didn't make you, I'm going to make you say it because if, even if you don't want it. He gave you a choice. He said, I'm going to invite you to salvation. To enjoy the blessing of redemption. I, he paid the price already. Paul is telling him, he redeemed you from your sin. He did all of that already. But now he's offering it to you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Do you want it or not? And some of us can think about all the years we say, oh, no. Oh, yes, no. This, this, this is not the first time. Last year wasn't the first time you heard about salvation. You, you'd been hearing about it. Ah, I'm not ready yet. I, that, I don't think that thing is for me. I don't, I, you know, I'm not that, that religious churchy type. We had all kind of reason, but it was just an invitation. Yes, he called you to come and enjoy the blessings of redemption. But somehow we, 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 ah, we here now. Thank God we, 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 we got some common sense, some good sense and say, well, this sounds like a good deal. I'm supposed to die. He's going to die in my place and he take the pen. Oh, yeah, that, that's a good deal. We, we got a little wisdom, enough to say, yes, Lord. Because that, that's the, with the redemption story. He redeemed us from our sin. That's what it's all about. But he didn't make us become saved. He invited us to become saved. And we was wise enough. One time in our life, if nobody said you wasn't wise, no, you just say one time I was smart enough to say yes, and I was saved. Jesus was solid. He was stable. When we talk about this, this, this uh, invitation, when we talk about uh, being worthy, it's because the third def part of the definition says this, and some of y'all going to like it, some of y'all not. He says, heavy, you're weighty, you're fat. I see some of them don't like that, 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 that laugh. That's why I put it last. <laughs> Heavy and weighty and fat. In a spiritual sense. In a spiritual sense. Because he's saying if you don't weigh nothing, every little wind blow, guess what? You, you're going to tip a little top over. If you don't have no weight to you, every, every time the storm, in Matthew uh, 7 and 25, uh, pull that up. You know what that says? He says, and the rain descended, and the flood came, and the wind blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. The foundation was a rock. If you're not heavy, guess what? You're going to topple over. Good, now let's talk about us that's top toppling over. Amen. Why you cry so much when the bills come in if you're heavy enough to know that God's going to take care of you? Why, 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 why we got to have an argument? Why, why we got to go to, oh, what I'm going to do? Why we talk about our, uh, the place where we work, our employer? Oh, they need to give me a raise. They need to give me more money. And you got a God that says, I got you covered. But somehow we're not heavy enough. Or when you hear somebody talking about you, they look at you two or three times and Lord have mercy if they laugh, <laughs> it's going to be on. But you're supposed to be heavy. You ought to be able to weigh enough to know that that person's opinion about you don't matter that much. 
Because guess what? You got, you got some weight. You got, God said you were the apple of his eye. But that's not enough. I, I want Joyce to like me. I want Bill to like If they don't like you, all right, you're going to be all right. You got to have some weight about you. You got to have something about you that says, I'm, I'm secure in me and what God says I am. If you don't care nothing about me, I, I'm heavy enough that the, when the wind blow, I might lean a little, but I'm not going to topple over. The, the rain descended, the flood came, and the wind blew, and guess what? It stood solid. But when you read the next verse, guess what? The house fell. Because it wasn't, it wasn't heavy enough. It wasn't on a rock. And Paul, Paul is trying to tell these Ephesians, we got to come together on the same rock. We got to be solid enough. We got to be steadfast enough. We got to be wise enough to know that everybody's opinion don't matter that much. And when we get there, guess what? You'll, you'll be a better believer. You'll be a stronger believer. You'll be worthy of the calling. He called you to be saved. He called you to be Christ-like. And, and can you imagine they calling Jesus a name? And he putting his, uh, you call me a name. No. If you're Christ-like, you got to be like Christ. Don't let everything that come up shake you, run you, make you cry. Oh, I'm not coming. I'm not doing this here because they didn't call my name. All that kind of stuff. I shouldn't have said all that kind of stuff, but anyway, <laughs> it's out there. But you got to gotta be strong enough to, to say, I see who God say I am, and that's enough for me. Yep, good. He goes on in this, in this thing, he says, now when you get to verse 2, he says, with all lowliness and meekness. Lowliness and meekness. Now, he's he describing how we should be as worthy walkers with God, if we're worthy of, of, of his calling, if we're worthy to be called Christians, this is how we should have. One of the, two of the characteristics together right there is lowliness and meekness. He said being humble and gentle. Now, some of us got the humble part. We're going to say, okay, I'm, I'm going to do it. It, it, it. It's like somebody... Uh, uh, they offer, they're going to fix your food. Let's say your wife. I, I like picking on them, them couple. Your, your wife, she's going she gonna to fix your food. You say, why are you up? Why don't you fix my food? She's humble enough to say, okay. But she's not gentle. Here. <laughs> and I, I get that from my, my, my in-laws. They, they were like that. My mother-in-law would fix his, fix his food out there. Here, Joe. But, but there's a gentleness about we should have as Christians. People go on fin you. Let me get that out for you. People gonna say things, and, and you gotta realize he's talking about Christians to Christians. He's talking believers to believers. He's talking about saints to saints, whatever word you want to use. That's what he's talking about. But sometimes we say the wrong thing. We short with each other. And, and when, when we short with each other, if, if, if you in charge, I might be humble enough to say, okay, but I ain't going to be gentle when I tell somebody about it. We, we, he he wants us to mix the two together. He wants you to be humble, but be gentle. You, you, can, say, you, can, you, can, you can say, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm going to do this, and, 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 and I'm going to be gentle with doing it. Look, look I got a, my right there, my knee hurt. Baby, won't you, won't you rub that? Yeah. I want to be gentle. I don't know. Yeah. Like, how is it? It was fine. It's fine. To the first lick, I'm going to say, it's fine. That's okay. It's good. We need, we need gentleness toward each other the same way. Even if somebody offends you and say something short, you don't, you don't have to, don't let them provoke you to provoke them. Don't, 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 don't do it. Be, take your time and say, you know what? I'm going to be gentle. Now, it ain't going to be easy because, you know, after you, after a while, we get with, with, with people, and it's hard not to be short sometimes. But we're going to work on it. But he said, be lowly. And, be, and then this is this, this the one that I, I really wanted to get to. What he said, with long-suffering and forbearing one another in love. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Long-suffering. Long-suffering. Because you know, sometimes uh, that long-suffering... 
it can, it can be problematic, I'm gonna put it that way. How long is long? Uh, how, how long is, is, is long? How many of us ever been in, with somebody talking to and say, they heard them say, that's long enough? I ain't taking this no more. You know, we, 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 that, that, that's, that's problematic when, with, with Christians. And we say, he say, be long suffering and, and what else? And forbearing. Well, ooh, ooh. That's carrying it. Long suffering. And let's look at long suffering first. That's what he said. He says, long suffering is a self restraint of the mind before it gives room to action or passion. It's a restraint of the mind before, before it gives room for, for, for action. It's simple illustration. Things going bad in the house. Why you rake everything off the table? I'm mad. You rake all what the table done? You make it, you, you get in room. Yeah, yeah. He says it's a restraint of the mind. How, how, how do you restrain your mind? Because you know that, that what the military say, a mind is a terrible thing to waste. Somebody say that. Uh-oh. But anyway, how do you restrain your mind? Because when something happened, the first thought comes to your head, it's like you can't catch it. You, you, you see it coming, <laughs> you see it coming, but you try to catch that thought before it, it, it get out and cause some action. And oh, sometimes we, we just too slow. And as we get older, that's, that's just for, Mom Lou, that's for us, that's, that's, go, go, that, that's, that's over 50, we got that reason. Now, if you're, not, if you're not over 50, that don't, you can't be included in that. Because we slower now, we, we're not as fast as we used to be. But now y'all young people, oh yeah, y'all got to be able to catch that. Y'all, y'all quick, y'all, y'all quick. And, and I can prove y'all quick. When parents ask you what you did, you say, who, me? You're the only one they're talking to. You see, your mind come quick. You, you, you get there. You, it, it, it's fast. But as you get older, you see, we, we slow down. So we got an excuse. But now y'all young people, y'all have no excuse. Long suffering. Catch it before it causes action. We got that, this question. What makes us deviate from, from that? What, 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 what makes, it, makes us turn? from not being long suffering? Is it, we, did we really have enough? Did something else go wrong? Did we start to, to drift? When I say drift, you know sometimes you can go through something so, so many times so often, and when you see it coming again, you're not saying nothing but you're sitting down there and your mind just start to drift and start taking you in. Yeah, yeah, if she say that one more time. I'm trying, Lord, just give me strength. Uh, Lord, I know you're my strength and my God. Hold me, Lord. Put a guard over my mouth. You, you, you're, trying to, you're trying to get those, those thoughts together. You're trying to find those, those, you're trying to put a what? A, a restraint on your mind. And you're trying to think about, and you say, wait. Well, and you do like my sister, when you can't think of nothing, you say, Jesus well. Because <laughs> your, your mind is going, you, you're starting to drift away from where you should be and where you need to be. But, but the Bible said be long suffering. And we can, how long do I have to take this? How long do I have, they have to say that? How often? And then they put forbearing. Forbearing is to endure or to tolerate. We don't like to tolerate nothing. We don't like to tolerate nothing. I don't deserve to, for them to treat me like that. So why I have to tolerate it? And, and we, we do that old color purple, I've been taking this all my life. <laughs> we go way back and, and, and I, we, don't wanna, we don't wanna tolerate nothing. But if you think about it, if it took you, if you got saved when you was 25, 
That's 25 years God tolerated you. If you got 30 years, he, he, he was long suffering 30 years waiting for you. He said, I'm, I guess I'll wake him up again this morning and you go get drunk or gamble or, or get high, whatever you was doing, chasing things that you had no ability. And he said, well, you know what? I guess I'll be long suffering. I'll wait a little longer. I'll wait a little longer. And some of us, he waited till we got in our 40s and 50s. And we came, okay, I tolerated you for 50 years. And we can't tolerate people for 10 minutes. We quick to say, if they just do it one more time, it's on in here. That, 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 that desire to, to not put up with each other and Paul was saying is in the church. We can't tolerate each other. We, and, and, and this is just my opinion, I'm just gonna throw this out. We think if you're a Christian, you shouldn't do that. If you're a believer, you shouldn't say that. If you walk with God, then that's not how you should conduct yourself. But if you ever turn around and out that window and look in that mirror, on, you're going to see you did the same thing. Yeah. Some of the same things you did, you're guilty of. But we don't like, now, 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 I, I got I to, gotta, you know, defend my young people. Oh, I, 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 you know, I got to defend my, now, young people, long-suffering, this is what we need. As your elders, we need you to be long-suffering and forbearing with us. We need, we need you to do that. One of the, the main reason we need you to, to do that because if you 15 or 16, some of us three times your age, yeah. and in your 16 years where you are now, 15 or whatever that age is, we done been there. We done done some of the things you thinking about doing or doing, and guess what? Be long suffering with us because we gonna say something because we see where you're going. We see the trouble you're headed to and we trying to stop. So bear with us. Yeah, we're gonna say the parents gonna tell you, don't do that, go on that. But just bear with us because you know, we understand the fact that we came up and like I say, I came up, we didn't have to dial but four numbers on the telephone to call people. And if you, if you stay close by somebody, all you have, hey, Lucy, get off the phone. I got to make a phone call. And they, they'd hang up because it was a party line. And you talking, you hear that click. Lucy, I know you picked it up. I heard you. And you hear them. We didn't have to dial but four numbers. And we get, then they went to five, and then now they got all these long. So we, I understand that it, the times is different. You got Facebook and TikTok and all these other things that they put, I, I understand that. But one thing we want you to understand, the character of people hasn't changed since Moses. The people, people haven't changed. They, they're still going to be bitter. They're still going to be conniving. They're still going to be uh, treacherous and wretched. That's the way people are. And we as parents, we need you to tolerate us, to endure what we're saying, because you know what? We trying to stop you from going off the same cliff that some of us went off of. Yes, so we jumping in the way, we getting in and, and getting in your business, say, what you doing? What, why, are you to, why are you talking to them like that? Because you know what? We did the same thing. <laughs> and we see you going that way, and we trying to block you from getting the hurt and pain that we went through. So I ask you, endure with us, forbear with us, uh, tolerate us, long suffering, for a little while, because we're trying to keep you from suffering like we suffer. And that's just what parents do. That's just what people who love you do. They get in the way if they think you're getting in trouble. If I see you getting in trouble and won't step in, you have to check out my love for you. You have to question that. If I'm going to see you going fall, and, uh, and if I'm going to stand there like, like young people do, watch their trip, watch their, they don't see it, they're going to and they'll see you trip and bust out laughing. But a parent, a person that loves you, you know, when they're going to see you, if they can't get your attention, they're going to jump in the way and take it for you because they know how it felt when they fell, when they had people laughing, when they was criticized. And that's all parents and grandparents and people in the church that love you. That's what we do. So you have to be long-suffering and say, well, here they come again. They're going to get in my bed. Be long-suffering with us. Forbear with us because we love you. 
And the next word we have is that love. Look what he says in that verse. He said, forbearing one another in love. And that love is agape. It's not the, 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 the affection of love, the friendship love, it's agape love. I, this is the definition I put up for uh, agape love. <clears throat> Unselfish love. That seemed like a simple de definition. But you see that part after it, after it, what it says? It's not showing, it's not showing, showing by doing what a person you love desires, but doing what they need. Because we're going to desire the wrong thing. That's just our flesh. You know, we, we kid 12 years old, you going to get me a car? No, I ain't getting you no car. You're 18 years old, don't want to work, you going to get me a car? No, I ain't getting you no car. Because you know what? We got to give you what you need. That's what Christ did for us. If it would have been up to us, you know what we would have told? God, give me good health, long life, a lot of strength, because I'm going to cut up all my days. But he know what we needed. Amen. He know that we, 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 we needed salvation. We needed deliverance from what we was going through. So he didn't give us what we desired because it would have been some, up to some other. The clubs wouldn't have never closed. We, we just said, oh, that if they opened it, let's stay there, let's stay. But he gave us what we needed. We needed to turn. We was going the wrong way. We was headed in the wrong direction. And he turned us in spite of ourselves because you know what? He had that agape love. Amen. Agape love to die for us while we were yet sinners. Somebody actually doing you some harm, hurt, and then you would do something good for him? That's not going to be us. But that's what, he's, that's what Paul is trying to say. You need to walk worthy <coughs> of, the, of the calling. Walk worthy. Walk willingly and worthy with God. Sometimes we, we see where God has taken us and we put on the brake. We're not willing to walk in that direction. Why is that? We understand agape love that what he did but we're not willing to press like we need to press. Let's look at our next verse, what it says. Enduring to keep the unity of the spirit in the bonds of peace. Enduring. Attempt to, uh, an attempt or strive with strong and great effort. Yeah. You ever really tried to do something? When you get little kids and you show them something and they see you do something and they can't do it, you're going to see them endure. I remember when my, my boys, they, they, they tall as me now, but when they were small, I, we used to play basketball. Kip, I put the goal a little long, but I could dunk on it. And boy, they get that ball and they look up at that, and they, they jumping and they jumping and they jumping. When they could do it, guess what? I put the goal up high. Yes, <laughs> now the youngest one, he still, can, he still could go up there and, and, and dunk. But, they, they, they strive. The, the thing was, I got I to gotta beat daddy. And we play, we play ball. And we play. When, I, when they got good enough, when I, I, I ain't playing with y'all. <laughs> Deacon Bryce, I won. Shoot. Why, why, I'm, I'm going to keep playing. I'm going to win. I'm, I'm going to go. I ain't going to do like them people. Well, I think I'm going to play when I'm 40. No, I ain't going to play when I'm 40. I'm going to go out a winner. So I, I, wouldn't, I, I, I wouldn't play. Y'all wanted y'all y'all too big. Y'all go shoot around, but I want to go out of winning. They, they gonna say, "Well, I played with daddy, but I'm gonna say you didn't win." <laughs> that that that. But I want to. They endeavor. They strive to to be. And in that striving, you gotta look at it and say, "I see who Jesus is. I see how, how His love is. Let me strive or endeavor to do like He did." But we give up easy. We, we, get, we see what God said. We see what he wants us to do. He said, like Paul said the, uh, in the, the last lesson, I'm not there yet, but Paul kept striving. When we see that, oh, and you know, that's, that's God. You know, he, Jesus, we can't do that. We don't try to love like he loved because we know we got the excuse. He, Jesus, I can't do that. Why he say be Christ-like if you can't do it? We like to quit easy. But now we're different when we see our children do that. Yeah, I'm going to defend them kids, too. Yeah, yeah. When, when, we, when our kids on the honor roll making that 
four point, four point three, and all that nine. I don't know how they get four. Uh, all they is supposed to be four when I went to school, but now they got four point something. How y'all get extra numbers when they just? That's the new mad though, call that new mad. That thing something, boy. But anyway, you you praising them, you praising them. You you got that love for them. Oh yeah, you gonna do this, and they come back with that three five. What's wrong with you? You you getting lazy? Wait a minute. Where the love? Where the gentleness? Do, do, you, do you ask him what's wrong or what's, what, what's going on? What happened? I remember the first F I got. Yeah, I got an F in school. <laughs> I went to, we, this was doing uh, integration before y'all, some of y'all time. So we, we, they, they integrated us, Glow. I was going to J.S. Clark, and, and, and they changed the name to East, and they said, you going to Appaloosa Junior High. Now, J.S. Clark was like from here. It wasn't from here to Super 1 from my house. It was that close. But they said, you're going to transfer you to, to, to Appaloosa Junior So we get in the class. The teacher say, uh, you don't have but two weeks, two weeks left in the six week. Y'all just sit down and shut up. Okay, we're going to sit down and shut up. You know? And they didn't, they didn't have the computer thing. They had to write your grade on that little card. At the end of the six week, that lady gave me that card. And in red ink, they had a big elf on there. I said, well, now, nah. I got to go show my mama a card with an elf on it. I held that card for a while. Uh, I said, well, she, you got your report card? Huh? Yeah, I got it somewhere. I wasn't in no hurry to give it to her. But I, I said, well, it's not my fault. I gave her the call. And so she said, she said, an F? That's that teacher. I said, we, we were never two weeks, and she told us to sit down and shut up. But you know, mama said, it better not come another one. I said, oh, man, that, I got off easy. But some of the teacher didn't get off easy because some of the other kids' parents came over there. And boy, it was on at that school. It was on that you ain't gonna give my child no help. But we got to learn how to say, what's wrong? Why, why is this? What, what, what's going on? How can I help you? Let's do some adjustment here. Keep the same bond of peace. Because if you blow up right then, you know what that kid gonna wanna do? Oh, ain't nothing good enough for him. Especially if they did their best. And we're not willing to accept sometimes that. Everybody not no 4.6 students. And, and even in our growing sometimes, now you can watch we can strive, and yeah, we're going to take some stuff away. That PlayStation got to go. Yeah, it got to go. You ain't playing no PlayStation. And that phone, we're going we to limit it. We're going to cut something out. To, but if that's the best you can do, you know what? You got to still lift them up and, 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 and encourage them. Don't beat them down till they say, I'll be glad when I get out of this house. You got to show them that love. And if we do the same thing in the church, guess what? Everybody not going to make A's in the church. So everybody not no full point, this student in the church, guess what? Sometime we're going to fall. We're going to get that bad grade. It ain't our fault, Carl. We get it. But show, show some love. Show some peace in, 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 within you, the bonds of peace. Bond it up with peace. Say, you know what? We can do better. We can work at this. And guess what? You're going to encourage that person and say, okay, everybody can't be no usher. Everybody can't work in the, in the, uh, in the nursery. I know a witness. Can I get a witness somewhere? <laughs> they, they, can't, they, they can't work in that nursery. Them, them children will do them something. They, they don't have the patience no more. They don't have that long suffering no more. They, they, and you know, you can't just grab a child like that. You can't. You, Glow, you know what I mean. Huh? You, can't, you can't do that no more. You got, you got to show, so when you look at this, you got to say, I got to have the bonds of peace. Look at verse, oh, wait, verse three, we ain't I like verse four, verse four. Look what they say. Now they got one seven times in, 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 through, in through these verses, but it say, there's one body, one spirit, even as we are called in one hope of our calling. One body, one spirit. 
Now he's talking about the body of Christ. It, it, it ain't no we. I know we got uh, Episcopalians and all this, but if they're Christians and believe it, that's one body. Amen. We got one body, and ain't but one spirit in this body. But he said, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling. That word hope. Hope is elpis, E-L-P-I-S. That's the, the Greek word. It says the desire of something good with expectations of obtaining it. When I read that, that definition, I like that definition. The desire of something good with the expectations of obtaining it. Let's look, look, look at Romans 11, and we're going to talk about that. But what Romans 11 say? Oh, you got that up? Yeah, yeah. For the gift and callings of God are without repentance. The gift and the callings of God is without repentance. I take that scripture, and I look at that, and I say, if, that, if it's without repentance, and I got to have hope. Now, this hope we're talking about is not what you, you know, this hope is not luck. It's not wishing. It's not, you know, that box of lucky charms and you got the, all the things in it. It's not the rabbit foot that you got to keep in your, in your pocket or your purse. It's not going in your yard looking for a four-leaf clover because I know they're good luck. It's not looking whether the horseshoe is turned upside down or right side up. I don't know what, but that's supposed to be luck. It's not the favorite shirt. And when I was walking with that, I had that shirt on. I found three dollars. So and if I'm, I'm, I'm doing without money, I'm going to put that shirt on again. It's not, it's not that. It's not wearing your, your lucky piece, your lucky charm and all. This hope, it says, <coughs> the hope is the desire of something good with, our, with the expectation of getting it. I want to obtain this thing. What, 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 you, what you expect? What, what, what do you expect? Uh, Jesus said this, and in, 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 uh, in Jeremiah says, call upon me, and I will answer, and you show you great and mighty works which you know not. If God said that, that's what I expect. Y'all you, got some expectation? Psalm, Psalms 27 says, says uh, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemies came upon me to eat of my flesh, they stumbled and fell. I expect that. Yeah. If my enemies come out, I expect to see them stumble and fall. The 23rd Psalm, we know that. But if, 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 if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Why we fall apart when things get low? You expect him to give you what you need? You expect him to, what's your expectations? The problem is we look at hope and say, I wish. Expectations say, I have because he said I have. What, what, what you expect? If I get sick, healing is the children's bed. I expect to be healed. The Lord is my provider. We say that all the time. Oh, he's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Nisi. We're going through all of them. But what do you expect? If you don't expect anything, you won't receive anything. Malachi tells us about, you should I, give your tithe to the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me, and see whether I won't open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing you, you don't have. What you expect? If you don't have no expectation, well, I guess I'm going to give it, but, you know. No, you got you to gotta expect him to do what he say he do. But that, that expectation, it comes because you're in what? In the body. I'm part of this body. I have that spirit living in me. So I expect to get what that spirit can provide. I expect to get what the body is supposed to have. And if I, if I expect it, then I got I to gotta be like, you know when we used to get checks in the mail? That, that dust coming down that road, we, that's the mail, man. That's the mail. Oh, he kept going. But you know what we're going to do tomorrow? We're going to get right back there when we see that. And if he stopped, that's it. That's it this time. Why? Because I expect to get it. When you work, you expect to get paid. Let that man not pay you. As kind as, as Kay is, she looks so kind and sweet. Let her not get paid. I bet you she's going to be there. Somebody going, well, well, can you wait till them? No, I ain't waiting till no tomorrow. I ain't waiting till next week. I ain't waiting till no next payday. 
Give me my money. We expect it. God is greater than our bosses, our employees. And he said, if you got some expectation, why don't you expect them? We are our own worst enemy in the church because we live without expectation. We live without knowing what God's going to do for us. We, we don't read enough. We don't study enough. And we don't walk enough in faith like he asks us to. He actually said, walk worthy of your calling. If you are a Christian, if you are a child of God, those promises are yours. You don't have them because why? You don't expect to. I expect Carl to be, be at church. I expect Carl to have a car. I expect Carl to be dressed with. I expect it. Why? Because that he's a child of God. Why, he, why should he suffer? And you got to look at yourself and say, why, why should I be the one without? I'm his child. Just, I'm just as much his child. Let me see which one he loved the most. No. He has the same love for me as he has for my moon. If she got it, I expect to get mine too. If I get sick, I expect to get healed just like everybody else got. They got healed. Well, you know, the Lord, you know, you know, whatever the Lord do, I'm okay with it. No, I'm not okay. I'm going to ask. You have not because you ask now. You got to know what the word say. And if you, if you don't know it, you're going to say, well, they don't care if they get saved, if, if they get healed or not. Yeah, I, I want to be healed and healthy. I plan on still hunting when I'm 85. Uh, Dwight, I plan on still doing it. But you got to have some expectation. You got to expect to win. You got to expect to be on the a top. You got to expect to succeed. Soon as the wind blow, we get back in our verses. Oh, well, I guess that's not for me. It's just the Lord's will in my life. Live with expectation. Live believing you're going to get what he promised you. And the only reason you, won't, you feel you won't get it, because you know why? We think our sin's blocking it. We think, well, I, I, I didn't do enough good today. Well, I said the wrong thing. But if you know what he said, is well, he said what? I died for your sins, past, present, and future. All you have to do is repent. That's why he said, that, you know, it, 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 repent. And guess what? I'm back in right standing. I'm, back. I'm not going to let the, the mistakes, the slips, the falls I made keep me from expecting God's best. And if you don't want your, send them to me. Just say, give it to him. Because he expects, since he expected, send it to him. We got to live with expectation. This is it. We about, we about to go. We about to go. He said, now in that, in that, in that thing, we say we got seven ones. When you start to read, he said, there is one body and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. Verse five, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. I like the, the last part that, that the, he's in you all, in all of us. But you know what? We fail to see that. <coughs> one hope. When he, when he starts to talk about it, he say we one body, one body of Christ. You, you, we just one body with different parts. We, we, I don't care if you just one blood cell. I'm in it. I'm the fingernail, but I'm in it. I, I, I ain't got to be the head. I ain't got to be the whole hand. Just, I'm in the body. If I'm in the body, guess what? I, I deserve them blessings. One, it, one body. He said one spirit. That one Holy Spirit covers all of us. It ain't got no 55,000 or it's 50 million people. No, it's one spirit. And that spirit dwells in all of us. He said one spirit. And then what, what's number three? He said one hope. What we just talked about. And you got, to, you got to be able to write down what you expect from God. And if you have to read it every day, read it every day. Because you'll get it in your spirit so when something happens, you can say, well, you know, I have this expectation that God's going to come through for me. You got to remind yourself of that. He said, one Lord, that's our Savior. And because we have one Savior, we're we, we all saved by the same God. He died for, for all of us. He ain't died more for you than for me. Right. See, we got one Lord. Then he said, what? One faith. That faith is in God. He said, Without faith, it's impossible to please him. You got to believe God's going to do just what he said he's going to do. That one faith, it's not, Carl got, don't have a better faith. He might have the same faith that I have. He's just using his more. He's just believing with his faith. And I'm wondering with mine. 
You got to take that faith and put it into action. One faith. Then he says what? <clears throat> one baptism. Now that one baptism is a twofold thing. It ain't but one baptism. But if you, when you read about it, you see him talk about being baptized in water, which is an outward show that I believe in Christ. But you're also baptized in the spirit. And that's what makes the difference. When, when I'm baptized in the spirit, that I'm covered in it. So I don't have to wonder how much of the Holy Spirit I got. I got just as much as everybody else. How much I'm going to rely on it, how much I tr trust in it, that's up to me. One spirit. And what's the other one? One God. One God. And that God is over all. He said, I, I'm, I'm over all. So if that's my God and he's over all, He's over me. And then the second part say he's through. He works through us. Sometimes we have an unwillingness for God to work through, especially the young people, because you know what? We look different. A young person look different that's praying at a school when everybody else just eating their food and, and they got the, They look different. They look different when everybody's cutting up and, and talking about what they're going to do and they're talking about righteousness. They, they look different. When everybody using all kind of language and they won't say it, they look different. But your blessing's gonna be different. Your life's gonna be different. Because your road is different. And when those same people gonna look back at you 10 years, 15 years, and say, I wonder how come they like that? Because you know what? They stayed focused and they look different. We are peculiar people. And we have to, as parents, we got to tell, yeah, be different, be unique. Be what God look, is looking for. And then he say he's in all. <clears throat> the God that's living in us have to come out. Amen. The God that's living in us have to come out. And when he say walk worthy of the calling, because you know what? Everybody's looking. Everybody, they're going to they tell you. And the minute you slip, they're going to say, you call yourself a Christian? You call yourself a man of God? And it's not, it, now remember he's talking about in the church. Yes, sir. So even in, as spouses, you call yourself a, a, a man of God? You call yourself a deacon? You call yourself a, a usher? Why? Because I've been offended and I want to attack the way you're walking with God. Yeah. Now we walk good, good with God on Sunday, coming to church and on Tuesday. Those in Dallas do a good job on Wednesday and, and Atlanta on Thursday. But it's a daily walk. Because you see, them, the, those one, two days that you're walking, you were in church, that, that, that's good, but that's not when they're looking. Amen. That's right, brother. They're looking on that Friday and Saturday, and, and when people get on your nerve, what come out your mouth, that, that's, that's when we look. Because the walk got to be a consistent walk. A consistent walk. That's what he's looking for. And Paul said, this is in the church that we need to walk worthy of the calling. I'm going to give you this, and we're and we going to go. Musicians can, can, can come. <clears throat> this, is, this is the thing. We won't have to pray as much for deliverance if we allow God to lead us. Amen. We won't have to pray so much for deliverance if we let God lead. We, we, we like to lead ourselves. We like to do our, our own thing. I'm going to do me. I don't know where to get that from. but We, we like to say, I'm going to do me. And then when you do you and get in that spot, come now, Lord, come quickly, Jesus, come deliver me. But if we let him lead us, guess what? We won't, we won't have to pray so much for deliverance. Another thing, we won't stumble as much if we let God order our steps. If we let God order our steps, we won't stumble as much. Because you see, the thing we do is we like to go our own way. And when we stumble and fall, Lord, pick me up. And guess what? He has to believe he's going to pick you up. He's going to turn you around. And you got to go right back there and get right where you were before you went wrong. But he needs, he needs us to say, Lord, you take control. You do what I can't do. Because I, 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 I don't know what's down the road. It's dark down there. I can't see all the, the things that's ahead. But I need him to lead I need him to guide me. Walk worthy of his calling. Before I go, this is what I, I want, want y'all to do. I'm going to read something to y'all while, uh, yeah, you can go ahead and play that. That's, 
There's a prayer in Ephesians that I would like every parent to read. And if you're married, get your family together, man, get your family together and sit them down and, and read this, this prayer. <clears throat> this is a prayer that Paul re, uh, gave to the Ephesians. This is what he said. <clears throat> he said, for this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might by the spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that ye being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, the length, and the depth and the height and to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that he might be filled with all the fullness of God and now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. And if you would, read that to your family before you go to bed. That's the last eight verses of Ephesians chapter 3, from 14 to 21. Read those verses with your family. And if you can get on your knees, that'll be good. You can get, y'all can get together and pray. But you pray that prayer over them. Maybe do it for a, a, a week, a month, and see the difference that God can make in your life. I thank y'all. Walk worthy of his calling. We talked about God saving us and what he did. We, we talked about his worthiness, and, and he did that. He, he saved us while we were yet sinners. And the walk with God is easy. If you because he, he, he wants to dwell in you to make it easy. There'll be some difficult spots in it. There'll be some ups and some down. But you got the expectation of say, knowing that he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. You have that hope in him. You have that hope in him that he said that just like I'm leaving, I'm gonna return again. And I'm going to take you to, to myself. I'm going to bring you with me. And I have my reward in my hand. But it all comes after you accept him as your savior. It comes after you admit that you're a sinner. You admit that you've done wrong. You admit that you fell short. You missed the, you've missed the mark so many times. And you ask him to forgive you. Why you, you ask him that? Because you believe in him. You believe that he died. You believe that he went to the cross and he suffered and he rose on the third day. And you got to believe that in your heart and you be willing to say, Lord, I'm asking you, I'm confessing you in my life and come into my heart. Don't just come in, but use me. Use me as your vessel. Use me like you use Paul to be a servant. And guess what? He'll come into your life. So if you would repeat after me, say, Father, I thank you for saving me. I admit that I've sinned, but I believe in you. I believe that you live. I believe that you died. I believe that you rolled on the third day. And now I confess that you are my savior. You are my Lord and you are my king. Come into my life, save me, that I can walk worthy of the calling on Christ Jesus. Amen, amen. Y'all be blessed. I pray God's blessing on you that as you go home, that he walk with you, lead you, and guide you. Cover every step of the way, Lord. Lead us be our strength and our shield. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bless y'all.